first thing, um, a bit of an annoyance, I guess, in that regard, in terms of Manchester United, there's been been a, there's a there's a leak in the camp. It appears like so obviously off the back of the six one loss against Tottenham, which I still haven't gotten over. To be honest, I think the club has. I think the club's moved on. I think no one really cares at the boardroom level for the most part. You know, they're okay with us playing Champions League football and facing such illustrious names and clubs such as PSG and Red Bull Leipzig. Um, they care about that and what it means to the brand. They care about that and what it means to the marketing uh, possibility, you know, the marketing potential of that encounter. But in terms of actually winning a trophy, they don't care. So it's no surprise that now the entire club is in disarray. We've essentially got a manager who's underqualified in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to have the job in the first place. But, you know, he did a good job. He got us to finish fourth. We, um, even though um, he got us to finish the top four, even though we kind of, you know, crawled all over the finishing line at the end there. And we only really finished in the top four due to other teams around us not being able to put together a sustained period of form in order to clinch that position. But we did it. Doesn't matter how we did it, we did it. So when this uh, average manager pulls out a pretty extraordinary result in getting us to finish the top four you'd think the first thing they'd want to do is improve on that right try and um you know correct the wrongs of the season by of the season just gone and try and make some kind of challenge or be a disruptor in a league no one's no united fan is going to be naive enough to think oh we're going to be able to challenge for the league title in a couple of years that's not going to happen right football comes in cycles this is probably our cycle of being shit so we probably need to um, accept that sooner rather than later. But at least be a, a team that can, you know, upset the odds, you know, that can throw a team off track, that can be able to disrupt fingers a little bit, you know, maybe sustain a good run of form that has us being top for like half of the season and we kind of fall off towards the end. Just give us something to shout about. No one's expecting us to win the league. Just give us something to shout about. So the board, you know, they have one job. Back your manager, get him, get him his targets, and then uh, again we go. And if anything, if you think about it, really, from a purely selfish and um, self-preservation point of view, if you're somebody in the boardroom and you get your manager the targets that they want, and then they still fail at the job, you've literally got they've literally got a no one leg they can stand on. They've got no point of recourse. They've got nothing they can say that they've been agreed by. Nothing, zero. As long as you give them ample time to perform, and you give them the signings that they need. If they don't perform within, of course, a prerequisite set of times, you know, maybe some terms you set out in the terms, hey, you've got two seasons to get us back to here or three seasons to do this, fair enough. But if you're able to give them the targets and give them the time and the space to do their work and they still fail, of course, move on to another coach. But at the moment, we've got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who's clearly not capable of doing the job, not being supported in the transfer market and having to play with a team that's made up of, what, three ex-managers, players in there? You've got Mourinho players in there. You've still got a couple. Maybe Do you have any Van Gaal players there? Well, Van Gaal era style players, I say. Maybe a few left over from the David Moyes era are still there, like Juan Mata, right? He's one that's probably still around. He's having to kind of, um, you know, sort of work him into a team even though Juan Mata hasn't played in a while. But still, you'd think they tried to pull him, but they don't. And um, and now Solskjaer is in a position where he's having to pick players he clearly didn't buy. You know, we can see, uh, you know, as been proven with the lack of first team opportunities that Donny van der Beek has, has been given in the first team. He clearly wasn't an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer buy. He clearly was a buy, um, you know, initiated by whoever's in charge of the football transfers at our club at the moment. It's not a football director. It's not a director of football. It's just whoever's in charge of it. Whichever one of Ed Woodward's friends gets the opportunity to do that job, bought for Donny van der Beek and probably ended up buying someone like an Igala, right? Sasha wanted, um, what's his face? Not Callum Wilson. Who's the other dude that Bournemouth he wanted? Josh King, who he previously worked with, or he's got some connections with due to his agent. It's a little Scandi connection there. He didn't get him, so we got Odin Nigala. So it's no surprise now that these stories are leaking out in the press. And this is from the United Report. It says the following An unnamed Manchester United staff, match day staff from Bruno Fernandes' half time against Tottenham. And as, you, as you're aware, we were losing, what was it, 4-1? Was it 4-0, actually, at the halftime or something? You know, 4-1 or something stupid at halftime, down to 10 men and just playing, you know, horrible football, not going anywhere. And, of course, you know, none of the team looked like they were really giving a shit about the loss. They were sort of, like, taking it in their stride, not knowing how to react. And um, the only person that seemed to be really agreed by it was Bruno Fernandes, you know, and evidently so. As the league continues, he said... Bruno Fernandes laid into his teammates, accusing them of not upholding the proud name Manchester United. He kept yelling, we're supposed to be Manchester United. This should not be happening. 
And that's true. It shouldn't be happening. But again, we're a team full of losers, managed by a loser, and of course, run by absolute losers. So we're going to get loser results. It continues. Unnamed Manchester United's matchday staff said, it was clear that the manager also came under fire because he was going on about the wrong tactics. There were other raised voices, but his was the one which seemed to carry the main force. So that rumour was true. I remember when the match finished and we saw, or even when the teams came out of second, second half and we didn't see Matic or Bruno Fernandes, everyone kind of assumed they got into it in a change room. And now, you know, it's probably been led correct. Bruno Fernandes probably got into Matic for not covering his defenders. Um, and then when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer started speaking about tactics, which, you know, he's obviously not um, in any way, shape or form in a position to do so. Bruno Fernandes probably then pulled him up on it as well and said, hey, you've probably set us out the wrong way. And of course, him being the manager, he had to kind of, you know, uh, put his foot down and decided to hold him up at half time. But this was obviously, this was bound to happen. The moment the Glaciers or Edward decided not to back Oligon Solskjaer in the transfer market, this is what we were going to get. We were always going to get this version of United. And as much as I don't like Oli Solskjaer, as much as I think he's a terrible coach, as much as I think he probably won't have another job in the Premier League again after he's fired by Manchester United, um, I still think he is owed or is, is at least earned the right to attempt to try and get us further up the table with his players this go around just because of what he'd done last season. Now, some of the some people could say, oh, it wasn't him actually, it was the players, cool, whatever. He was still the person steering the ship. If he was in charge and he feels the one that was in, you know, in the captain's seat in terms of getting us over the line and we did it, we did it. It doesn't matter how we did it, we did it. Don't get me wrong. Was it Vintage United? No. Was it probably, you know, uh, was it probably um, depression-inducing football? Yes, very much so. But we did it. We achieved it. We got him back into the Champions League ahead of some other teams who probably think they probably should have got in there. Arsenal being a big example. So why not give him the players that he wants? And again, if he doesn't do a good enough job, you've got a ready-made excuse to get rid of him. You gave him the time, you gave him the players, and he didn't do what was needed, and now you go. But instead, they don't do that. And now we're going to be back to square one. Um, supposedly, we're being linked to Mauricio Pochettino. There's another report here from, again, from a United report that says, Manchester United are mindful that Mauricio Pochettino will not be available forever. He also has admired at Manchester City. So you can imagine the tug of war going on at the moment, right? Manchester City are on a bit of a weird, you know, bit of form at the moment. People are questioning whether or not Pep Guardiola can recreate the magic of Man City. Can he, um, at some point, be able to put together a coherent or can, you know, a uh, functional defence that doesn't require him to spend excess of, what is it, a billion or something, close to a billion on defenders? Can he do that? And if so... And if he can't, then maybe you get another manager in. And the only manager out there at the moment who could probably do that job, especially in England, would be a Musha Pochettino, who you could actually trust to play a particular brand of football, you know, to give youth a chance um, to improve the players that are available already at the team. There's not many managers that could do that. And unfortunately, again, for Oli, he's in a position where there's a ready-made replacement out there who's a much better coach than him, right? There's no denying that, especially considering the fact that Oli's been in the game for, what, a decade or more. Right, he has not really achieved that much, um, and he's not really regarded. Of course, he's won a league title, which is more than what Pochettino can say. But winning a league title at Molde and keeping Southampton up in the Premier League are probably comparable, I'd say, in that regard. But that aside, that's going to be pressure that I don't think Solskjaer can handle. And with the next five games that we have coming up at the moment, right? I think I checked it earlier. There's some mad games that United are playing, absolutely mad games. I don't actually see how this guy's ever going to survive. So it, this month might be the last month that we see Solskjaer in a dugout for United. And I honestly think he has no one to blame but himself. No one. He can't blame anybody else but himself. So when we get back from the international uh, break, what do we have here? This is from Google, right? Let's see if this is correct. So when we get back from the international break, we face... Oh, my God. Yeah, Solskjaer is gone. We're facing Newcastle away from home. Then we've got uh, Paris Saint-Germain and Champions League away from home. Then we're back um, in the Premier League. We're facing Chelsea at home. So you've got Newcastle, Paris Saint-Germain, Chelsea, Rebel Leipzig and Arsenal. Are the five games that he's playing. And then it makes sense that they would probably get rid of him here just when we, you know, probably falter or we have a bad run of games. And then whoever the new manager is, the matches after Arsenal are against the Turkish team we're drawn with in the Champions League, um, away to Everton, at home to West Brom, then away again to the Turkish team and then back away at Southampton. 
a far better run of results, a far better run of ma- of games to manage United than coming to manage United against Newcastle, Paris Saint-Germain, Chelsea, Red Bull, Leipzig and Arsenal. Again, scummy move by the board. I think if, if Oli Solskjaer does end up getting fired, then there is an argument to be said. That's not an argument. Um, there is definitely some cause to be had there in terms of Ed Woodward also losing his job. If you sack Oli, you have to get rid of Ed Woodward. He's resided over, what, three, four, was it three now? Three failed managers in Van Gaal, Mourinho and um, Oli. He can easily say, hey, David Moyes wasn't my pick because essentially Alex Ferguson got him that job. But let's go from that, from from. Moyes onwards, right? Van Gaal, Mourinho and Oli Solskjaer were all Edward the appointees. They were all not given the framework or the structure necessary for them to... And again, that's funny thing is, all three managers, especially in Oli's case, we would probably... I would imagine Oli was really resistant to having a football director. I think that's why we didn't get it in the end. I can imagine him being a little bit arrogant about it and saying, hey, I would... I trust in my own ability, which, you know, is whether it's unfounded or not, you know, that's his own... Um, he's allowed to think that. But it's funny that all three of those managers could have would have benefited more from having a football director than any other manager we ever had or any other manager that we could have got. They need it more than ever. They need to have somebody that can, you know, steer the ship footballing wise so they can concentrate on the coaching in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's case, which I don't even think he's does anyway that proficiently sometimes you watch us play football and you're thinking to yourself what are these guys doing training all day it's a very very bizarre state of affairs but again let's see um that news obviously that leak has been interesting to see it, it makes me think that the leak quite could quite possibly come in from some of the newer players obviously they said it was a match day source there but that leak regarding um Bruno Fernandes and Matic and Oli having some sort of disagreement in change room which led to uh, Bruno and Matic coming off at half time was something that we heard right after the match finished so I'm sure this league is coming from some of the newer players in the team whether it's a Donny whether it's a Bruno Fernandes whoever is doing it they're definitely trying to put that news out there to put some pressure on the board or to maybe like fire up the team and social arcs in order to kind of pull together the results because I'm indifferent I'm not really you know if social doesn't get fired I'm not going to lose my mind and jump out of a window but I'm also kind of on the line of thinking of if he's not the right mind for you, just get somebody else, right? Just so they can get started. I don't get this whole like waiting another five games. I get the five games are a bit more appetizing, the ones I just mentioned afterwards, right? If Tosha doesn't pass this five game test, then fair enough. But I still think I'd much rather give whoever's in charge the time and the space to do what they need to do to get the best results for our club. Um, I don't see how we should kind of essentially flail ourselves just so we can really really be sure that Solskjaer isn't the man for a job because we know we know he isn't we all know we all wished the sentiment was true we all wished um our 99 hero could somehow pull it out um you know put a rabbit out from the hat and sort of rewrite history and sort of like you know because that's the thing as well that's hard with Solskjaer too because we were around but we watched Cardiff get relegated that season when they were in the Premier League right and we saw how bad they played football, right? We saw the lack of like tactical innovation in Solskjaer's coaching. He wasn't being lauded or spoken about in the ways that, you know, a Chris Wilder's spoken about. Um, what was his face at, um, at Brighton, the manager at Brighton? He's not spoken about in the same ways as, you know, um, Nuno at Wolves. He's just a manager that happens to coach United. He's not really regarded that well for his, you know, coaching expertise. So we all really hoped it would have worked out. It's not going to work out. I don't think so. I don't think this is ever going to change. Solskjaer is a pretty terrible coach. And unfortunately, he's at a club where he's not really being helped in any way, shape or form either. He's sort of being left to do it and handle it on his own. So I don't think this is going to end that well for him after this. So I fully expect us to move on, get Pochettino and, you know, hire somebody who can essentially work in a really tight budget or low budget and he can improve the players we have available and he's had to clear suit. So if anything, he ticks all the boxes that the Glaciers kind of want for this kind of new era of United and what we've kind of become over the last few years. We're not a winning machine in a way that Bayern Munich is where all Bayern Munich are, we are an efficient, you know, money-making machine. That's exactly what we are. We are somebody's marketing play toy, someone's marketing case study, and unfortunately the football side of things is going to suffer.